Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bitch you channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm domestic terrorist Bill Stone. Uh, while I've got your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my subscribe star, my PayPal tip jar, my merch store on Teespring, where I'm now selling an I'm a Domestic Terrorist line of merch due to San Francisco, having branded the NRA as a domestic terrorist organization. And there's also a place on my website where you can support me further. And there's links to all of these in my description box. Politicians on both sides of the aisle are both re using recent mass shootings in the United States to further destroy the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Republicans want to institute red flag laws that would essentially allow anyone to report someone else as a danger to themselves or others. Their firearms would then be confiscated without due process nor with any procedure to have them returned. Now we've been down this little road for almost 20 years with terrorist watch lists. In the in wake of 9-11, these were instituted and millions of Americans, myself included, were placed on watch lists. And there is no due, no due process and no recourse. I have now been assured by three congressmen and two senators from three different states that there is no way that you can be removed from these lists. And to do this with the Second Amendment is to even further destroy the Constitution. Not that it actually needed much help. And historically, really, the Constitution didn't last more than about 18 months under President Washington. President Thomas Jefferson, my favorite politician of all time, himself stated that the Constitution was strained to the breaking point with the Louisiana Purchase. President Lincoln, for all the good he did with slaves, transformed what were sovereign states into a centralized government, effectively putting the Constitution into its coffin. FDR pounded the final nails in the coffin, and every politician since has been taking turns either urinating or defecating on the Constitution's grave. But in any case, Trump and the Republicans want to continue urinating and defecating via red flag laws. In the case of the Democrats, particularly in the form of Beto O'Rourke, they want to do away with the Second Amendment completely and to confiscate the over 197 million guns in private hands. O'Rourke is particularly odious. He has actually asked private businesses such as credit card companies and big tech to cease doing business with Second Amendment supporters. Yeah, you heard that right. A sitting congressman running for the Democratic nomination for president. Well, he can't destroy the Second Amendment, so he wants multinational corporations and big tech to do it for him. So let me say that again. A sitting congressman who's running for the Democratic presidential nomination can't eliminate the Second Amendment, so he wants big corporations and big tech to do it for him. A Democrat in favor of having big tech and corporations more powerful than government. Words just fail me. I, I always thought the Democrats hated big corporations, which I guess they do, unless they want to increase victim disarmament. Keep in mind, of course, that O'Rourke and all those in federal office took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. They didn't take an oath to protect the people, but rather the Constitution, and there is a big difference. But O'Rourke, and for that matter, every single president, congressman, senator, and judge of my lifetime spends every waking hour undermining and destroying the Constitution. Very little that the federal government does is constitutional by any sane reading of that document. This automatically places Beto and his cohorts in direct violation of their oaths of office. In a sane world, each and every one of them would now be on trial for their lives and, when inevitably found guilty of treason, hanging from one of the many beautiful lap posts in Washington, D.C. But all of this ultimately adds up to more victim disarmament, which, by the way, victim disarmament is the real name for gun control, as restrictions placed on firearms will only create ready victims who will, by definition, be attacked by criminals who do not care about violating gun laws. So we're reaching a point, possibly within my lifetime, when the Second Amendment will be rendered moot. 
and at a certain point it will be almost certainly trigger civil war. But what can we do in the meantime? Well there is in fact something we can do and we need to perfect the gyrojet. Now the gyrojet is a family of very unique firearms developed in the 1960s and it's named for the met method of gyroscopically stabilizing the projectiles. I'll get to that in a second. Rather than inert bullets, gyrojets fall, fire a small rocket called microjets which have, which have very little recoil and don't require a heavy barrel or um, chamber to resist the pressure of combusting gases which is what happens when you fire a bullet. Velocity on leaving the tube is very low but increases to about 1250 feet per second at a distance of about 30 feet. 1250 feet per second that's about what you get out of a Model 19 and 11 pistol at the barrel. The difference is the bullet at the barrel slows down as it reaches its target. This one speeds up as it reaches its target. But the result is a very lightweight weapon. It basically is a launching mechanism uh, combined with a loading mechanism. And I had occasion to actually handle one of these pistols at a gun show one time. I have to tell you, it felt more like a toy than an actual gun. They came with, in both a pistol and a carbine version. I've never touched a carbine version. I have seen it in um, museums, but that's all. And they've been out of production for decades. They're now a very coveted uh, collector's item. Prices for even the most common ones will often be well above $1,000. And they are rarely fired. You can find some videos where they do fire them here on YouTube, or on YouTube, rather. And when available at all, a round can cost as much as $100 per round. So they're not fired that much. The gyrojet never actually saw much usage. Its most famous appearance is in the James Bond movie, You Only Live Twice. There are reports that it may have been used as a sniper weapon a couple of times during the Vietnam War. It has a distinct advantage as a sniper weapon. Since it fires a rocket rather than a bullet, there is no report. There is no sound. There's no bang. It sounds a bit more like a rob bottle rocket. However, the gyrojet did have significant problems with accuracy, and this is in due in large measure, measure to the method which, which spin is imparted to the rocket. Now, in order for a bullet or any projectile to be accurate, it has to have spin. In modern guns, this is achieved by etching a spiral pattern onto the inside of a gun's barrel, and this pattern is called rifling. Now, you can see the rifling right here in this one. You're looking straight down the barrel of a gun. As the bullet moves through the barrel, the spiral rifling imparts spin to it, and this is why, generally speaking, long guns are more accurate than pistols. The longer the barrel, the more rifling, the more spin that the bullet has when it leaves the barrel. Now, a gun with no rifling is called smoothbore, and really the only major instance where we see this is the shotgun. It fires a whole bunch of really small pellets, and there's really no way to impart any spins, so the bore is just smooth. The gyrojet is also smoothbore. As I said, it's just essentially a launching tube combined with a reloading mechanism. So how do you get the spin on a gyrojet rocket? Well, you do it via its jet rocket holes. Now, as you can see in this picture, there are four small holes at the base of the rocket. Now, this is where the propellant for the rocket was used to push forward. However, it's also used to impart spin because the holes that you see there, they look like it, but they're not. They're not at a straight line. They're actually at slight angles. So this then causes the rocket to spin in flight. And while this was a technically ingenious way to impart spin, it was also problematic for manufacturing methods of the 1960s. The rocket you see here is actually very small. It's a bit less than half a centimeter in diameter. And there, those little holes that they've got in there are going to be obviously very, very tiny indeed. So during the 1960s, it was essentially very difficult or impossible to consistently get the holes at the correct angle and the correct size. It was just impossible given the manufacturing technology of that era. But this problem is now gone, thanks to 3D printing technology. A good 3D printer can place these holes correctly every single time that it prints out of a rocket. And that's how we get to circumventing the erosion of the Second Amendment that has been ongoing for a century. Because everything about the gyrojet is 3D printable, probably even including the rockets. 
Many parts of a conventional gun aren't 3D printable. Since you're essentially setting off a small explosion that pushes the bullet down the barrel, many parts of that gun have to be able to withstand that explosion. Well, this isn't the case with the gyro jet. There's no explosion, nor any heat, nor any significant recoil. The barrel is used solely for aiming and not for spin. You can make the entire thing out of plastic. And in fact, the gyro jets manufacturers did do some initial testing where they used cardboard toilet paper tubes to launch the rockets. The gun itself can be solely made from the plastic from any 3D printer. Now, there are some problems that need to be solved. The rockets need to be perfected. The rockets themselves can probably be plastic and therefore 3D printable. However, the fuel used as a propellant would need to be tested because there would need to be experimentation with both that fuel and the rocket to determine the caliber that's appropriate so that the plastic rocket doesn't melt during flight. Also, you'd have to worry about the accurate venting, but again, once that you've discovered the correct angles, the 3D printer can produce the exact same holes every single time a round is printed. The propellant would need to be perfected, and it would need to be something that can be found in common household chemicals or easily available commercially for some purpose other than rocketry. It needs to be something so common that it cannot be banned by government. And I would also suggest a few other changes. One of the major disadvantages of the gyro jet was its loading mechanism. In order to get rounds into the gun, it was top loaded. You had to pull back the slide like you're seeing here and then push rounds down into the handle until it was fully loaded. Now I've seen videos on YouTube of people doing this. It looks like a really painfully stupid way of doing things and also incredibly slow compared to any other modern gun. The solution for this is real straightforward. You should replace this whole mechanism with the common magazine design used on every single semi-automatic weapon on the market. Missiles can be preloaded into the magazine, which is then slid into the bottom of the handle. There's also a problem with the gyrojet's grip angle. Now, grip angle refers to the angle of the handle with respect to the barrel of the gun. Generally speaking, you want the grip angle of a gun to be similar to making a fist and then pointing your finger. Something like this is a grip angle. Now, the uh, more the grip angle deviates from this, the more difficult it is to intuitively shoot. You can certainly learn to fire it, you know, and be a great marksman, but this kind of grip angle is intuitive. With the gyro jet, the grip angle is much too straight. It makes it even more difficult to intuitively aim. So I would change this grip angle pretty straightforwardly. I'd make it to the same grip angle as is used on the Ruger standard pistol. It was also used in the German Lugers of World War II. Its grip angle comes closest to what I describe here as pointing your finger and holding a fist. Now I have fired a lot of different weapons in my time and while I love my Model 19 1111 and am a good enough marksman with it, I happen to find that this Ruger Standard has a, probably the most comfortable and intuitive grip angle. Finally, there is the last and probably the most controversial change that I would suggest. There is no reason that a gyro jet can't have a switch to set it from semi-automatic to select fire to full auto. The biggest problem you see with fully automatic weapons, which by the way, for those of you who don't know, have been outlawed for the better part of a century now, is recoil. Every time that you fire a bullet from any gun, not only does it push back against your hand, but it also causes the barrel to move upwards. So in a full auto weapon, this means you're doing this repeatedly, just firing off, you know, pulling the, pulling the trigger down, firing off all kinds of bullets. And that means that the barrel's constantly trying to be pulled up. So half the time the shooter is basically trying to control the weapon by pulling it back down as it keeps trying to be pulled up. And this is one of the reasons why select fire exists. It's a lot easier to control a gun when you have only three or four shots going off as opposed to 30 all at once. However, since the gyro jet produces almost no recoil, the shooter could easily control a fully automatic mode. Now understand, of course, that full automatic weapons or guns rather are very explicitly illegal. I don't know what the legality would be in making it a single shot, select fire, or full auto pistol or long gun. And however, that brings me to my final point. Distribution of the plans necessary for 3D printing a gyrojet. 
As the entire purpose of the gyrojet is to circumvent the gutting of the Second Amer Amendment, plans couldn't be distributed in a normal fashion. You couldn't put your name on them and put on a website. You, you could not even put your name to it at all. No one will ever be able to take credit nor distribute the plans. It would need to be done completely anonymously and made available via BitTorrent. Any other method of design and distribution can be traced, made illegal, and confiscated. An anonymous designer distributing the plans via BitTorrent will be protected from any prosecution. And furthermore, anyone with access to BitTorrent will be able to download and or see the plans or seed the download with near anonymity themselves. And even better, it makes the plans available worldwide. Anyone with a 3D printer and the right chemicals for a propellant could make one. Now imagine the impact this would have in countries undergoing civil war in which the rebels have little access to firearms. Imagine the impact on oppressive nations whose citizens might wish to revolt but have no weapons to do so. This would provide them with something they could 3D print. They would be near silent weapons, meaning using them would have, make it a lot harder for an oppressive government to locate who had fired and from where. There's no sound to give it away. Being plastic, they might also be easily smuggleable, where they would have a metal profile and weight would certainly betray a standard gun. A 3D printed gyrojet would make a perfect weapon for almost anyone in the world. So those of you with some engineering knowledge, Time to break some eggs. There is an Old West American adage. God created men and Sam Colt made them equal. With a 3D printed gyrojet, this would become God created men, Sam Colt made them equal until government made it guns illegal, and the gyrojet made them equal again. And that is all that I have to say about that. So, thanks for watching. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm domestic terrorist, Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.